I'm the Greg. Dillinger Escape Plan. Dillinger Escape Plan. Mosh can. You're watching it. You know what? I think Crossburn is my favorite right now. Yeah, right now that might be. And we're not playing it. Um, <laughs> uh, it's just got a different vibe than the rest of our songs. It's slower. It's yeah. doomier. Um, it's sinister without, you know, being yeah. frantic. It's it. I feel like it's just a. Uh, I don't know, a relief maybe yeah. to be able to pull a song like that off for us when we started off so spazzy. And in some ways, this is a little bit more general, but the first and the last song. First song of the set, last song of the set, for, you know, for obvious reasons. Listening to Winger 17 at like, dimed. Yeah, that, yeah. that is kind of... We listen is. to ridiculous music and, yeah. and, and try to get a buzz, you know, while <laughs> listening to it. So it's either hair metal usually, or just really, really ignorant, yeah. like ghetto hood anthem you know, OG, rap music. Bobby. OG Bobby Johnson. <laughs> Word on the streets, I'm a suspect. Yesterday I told the story about when we smoked the joint with Darth Vader. That's uh, a good story. We, we, we met Hayden Christensen in, in Toronto. That was pretty funny. Um, opening for ODB is also pretty bizarre. Coming back into Germany, out of Poland, when we got pulled over and they wanted to open that lockbox under our Sprinter van, oh, yeah. that was really scary. Uh, all the times that we thought we killed people. Do you, I don't know if you remember <laughs> this, I was talking to, to Asian Steve about this the other day. We were, when we did that tour where we were driving the van and the, yeah. the, the box truck. Oh, yeah. That band Heavy Heavy Lolo was driving next to us, and me uh -huh. and Asian Steve were in the U-Haul, and we like like swung the U-Haul to try to like scare them, and we actually hit them. <laughs> I don't think we ever told you guys because we oh thought you guys would get really bummed, yeah. but we actually nicked their their van oh my God. with the U-Haul while we were driving it. We could have killed them. That was and, yeah, and we were thinking, the other day we were talking, we were like, what if we killed them? Like, What if they drove off the road and died? Yeah. Would we ever tell anybody? And the answer was no. My favorites are always the people that have like, you know, they experienced some type of horrific injury in like, and but they're amped on it. You know, they're just like, dude, last time you played here, like this happened to me and yeah. I, you know, I had a bone sticking out of yeah. my arm. And like, it was I had to get my face was, reconstructed, but it was <laughs> It was awesome. awesome. I'm like, dude, that sounds horrible. Like, like, what, why would you, like, yeah. what are you guys doing each other out there? Yeah. Know? Uh, Every now and then there's someone that you're like a really huge fan of that like, you find out is actually into into your band, yeah. and, and that's like a real, like. Yeah, when you're when you're at that level now, where you're like, you want to go up and be fanboy about somebody, and they're like, you realize that you're like as older than they were when they made the music that you love, and you're like, whoa, this is really weird. Yeah, but yeah. we're like hanging out with Phil Anselmo, and he's talking about getting molested. This is really strange. No, you know what? That was my favorite. <laughs> Recently, we played a show. And then Phil Anselmo was there, and, and when we got off stage, like he came up to me and pulled me aside, and I was like, this guy, he always looks like he's about to kick your ass, you know? So I was like, shit, I don't, this is gonna be weird. And then he just started telling me about how rad our show was, and like how, you know, we were carrying the torch for, you know, he's like, everything I, you know, I did back in Pantera, you know, you guys are fucking carrying the fucking torch, you know? Like, I was like, dude, this is fucking awesome, yeah. you know? Like, so it's like things like that, yeah. you don't really forget. Yeah, Rob Trujillo gave me like a shout out in like some bass player magazine before I ever met him and I was just like, oh, I'm even on that dude's radar. Like, that's who I grew up to be, you know? So that was kind of cool. Minus the jersey and the shorts and, the, you know, sparkly bass. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite rumor is that we know what we're doing when, we, when, we, when we're writing songs. Yeah, right. that, or that, oh, you guys must practice so much. It's like, yo, we haven't all rehearsed in the same room in, in Years actually, I think. We, actually, we did yesterday. We pra our practice for this tour was getting together in the hotel room, and B B Billy was like using a, like hitting the bed with drums, and like I think there was a Bible involved. There's like a yeah, China. Yeah, I think the Bible was like some type of symbol, and that was like the first time we had. You know, we don't. Yeah, people. The, the, the whole like you guys must practice a lot thing. Or that is, like we rolled dice to like come up with our time signatures or something. Yeah, too. like there's there's some good ones. Is that Lars press conference? Yeah. There that's, was, when that Metallica was got inducted into the Hall of Fame, they did like a press conference 
and uh, it was like a free for all. You know, anyone could ask them anything. Like Rolling Stones, there, whoever was there. And someone uh, said, Lars, are there any young bands right now that you know you think are doing anything innovative? And uh, he kind of rattled off a list, and then, off a list and then he stopped and he was like, well, one band in particular that I think is really exciting is the Dillinger Escape Plan. So I woke up that day and had like a gazillion text messages from people that are like, you must be so stoked, you know, like, I was like, what are yeah. you talking about? Yeah. So and then I like kept reading and I was like, oh my God, what? And like, I watched it. I watched like the fucking YouTube video like a hundred times, like trying to process yeah. like what was coming out of his mouth. And you know, that was, so that was like a a weird like circle closing moment from like your nine-year-old self being like I would do anything to like yeah like even be on this guy's radar to yeah. having that come around it's full not who you like know that. it's who knows you that's so all really of a true you're like whoa wow you know kind of life or moment don't miss any shows ever for any reason ever yeah. like some I mean honestly touring kind of just divides the you know the people who are meant to do it from the people who aren't very quickly, you know, and uh, one of the best ways to tell is whether you can just make it to the show. Yeah. And and some bands are just like, oh, we couldn't make it. You know, our, our van broke down. And I'm like, no, dude, like you fucking figure it out. You know, I don't care if you have to rent a car and leave the van and show get all your Show up and only play one song. Just get yeah, just there. Just get you there. Know? It says volumes, especially yeah. when you're an opener and like, you know, if we take your van on tour and like, you keep you're missing shows and like stuff like that. It's like that. Yeah, just I mean, we've played shows without members just to play. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And it's not exactly advice, and I'm not really sure where it came from. But I heard a quote that really kind of solidified a lot for me, which was, "I don't get paid for the hour I'm on stage. I get paid for the 23 it took me to get there." And I really feel like it's not the like hour that you're playing. It's the like putting up with everybody and finding people who can you can put up with for those 23 hours. And they may not be the best like musicians but they're good enough and you need to get along with them for the other 23 hours of your day and that's so you like that's the majority of your time so that's why super groups don't always work play one the drummer knows uh <laughs> play the hard shit pussies yeah I know, I put this. My favorite is when they yell out a song you've already played. Yeah. Because, uh, it used one. to happen a lot more because all our songs were kind of sound very similar. Mm -hmm. And uh, so people would be like, yell a song out. We like, just literally played that two songs ago. But, or before you even start, play one more. That's good. <laughs> Check this area out right so here. So if you want more, subscribe. Subscribe. Here. Here. Click. I <laughs> uh.